Welcome back. We're talking about the latest ceasefire in Gaza and the ongoing negotiations between Israel and Hamas towards a permanent solution. Joining us now from Tel Aviv is the spokesman for the Israeli Foreign Ministry, Paul Herzen. Mr. Herzen, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Nice to be with you. We just talked with a representative of Hamas, Osama Hamdan, and he gave us a long list of demands that Hamas is making at these talks that are being taking, uh, taking place in Egypt. Uh, what is Israel's view on the uh, negotiations? Well, you know, there's a conversation which is on. We're, we're, we're all down there in Cairo. We're speaking with the Egyptians. Uh, the, the picture is very simple. We're, we're looking to find the formula uh, which will guarantee that Hamas and the other terror organizations in, in, in Gaza uh, will stop firing at our people. That's, that's the challenge. In the short run, it's something they can decide to do. Uh, in the long run, there seems to be an increasing international consensus. The, the European Union has agreed, the United States has agreed, uh, that the, the way to guarantee this in the long run is through the disarming of these terror organizations, through the, the uh, demilitarization of the, the Gaza Strip. Now, one of the other things that's being talked about is international monitoring uh, of a demilitarized Gaza. Is that acceptable to Israel? Well, I, I think it would be prudent for us to allow the, the diplomacy to proceed discreetly uh, uh, rather than have the conversation out, out in public. What, what is clear is that, look, this is the third time that we were forced back into this uh, situation in the last uh, five, six years uh, since Hamas took power in, in uh, uh, the Gaza Strip through, through quite a brutal coup back uh, seven years ago. And, and each time money has poured in to rebuild Gaza, and each time that money has been diverted by Hamas from, terror, from civil purposes to terror, from, from above ground to below ground, from building schools and hospitals to, to building tunnels, uh, bunkers, and, and launch pads. Uh, so when it comes to international monitoring, I think what really needs to be monitored is, is the, the use of the money that, that is uh, uh, given to the reconstruction of, of Gaza. Uh, without demilitarization, uh, all we're going to see is any money that comes into Gaza is going to go right back into terror, and none of it is going to go to the people of Gaza who, who need it so much. Well, let's look ahead to some of the proposals which are being discussed in Egypt. Uh, the Israeli newspaper Haaretz is reporting that Israel has agreed to ease conditions in Gaza, including extending the coastal uh, fishing zone, which is, it will ease passage of people entering Israel and the West Bank, allow money into Gaza to pay salaries, and allow trucks to enter Israel. Uh, can you confirm any of that? Is that being discussed? Well, I, again, I, I don't think it would be correct to discuss in public uh, uh, the diplomatic conversation that's going on in, in Cairo. I think it's got much more chance of, of progressing if we allow the people a little bit of discretion. The conversation is about how to guarantee that uh, Hamas and the other terror groups will not target our population. Uh, as to trucks going in and out, look, there, there have been zero restrictions. Uh, on export from Gaza. There are very, very limited restrictions on imports into Gaza of what's called dual-use products. And we've seen exactly how they've abused that by, by taking $1.2 billion of construction material and pouring it underground to build terror tunnels. Now, the Palestinians are calling for a massive airlift of aid into Gaza to start with reconstruction there. Is Israel going to allow these supplies to get through? Correct. Uh, Israel has been calling for this. Israel has been encouraging this. Uh, throughout the course of the last five weeks, every single day, with the exception of two days ago, uh, uh, humanitarian aid has poured into Gaza at Israel's request, at Israel's facilitation. Uh, uh, the day before yesterday is the only day that didn't happen, which was uh, because Hamas deliberately targeted the Kerem Shalom crossing point, and, and for safety to the personnel there, we were forced to, to close the crossing point, and that's the only day humanitarian aid did not go in. Uh, but, but Israel has been calling for more as much as comes. Uh, uh, anything that comes through Israel, of course, there are, there, there's also the, the uh, border with Egypt. But anything that comes through Israel, 100% uh, of the aid is going through. Okay, I want to look at some of the fallout from this month-long conflict that has taken place in Gaza. The United Nations Human Rights Council has announced an international commission of inquiry to investigate possible war crimes by Israel and by Hamas. Will Israel cooperate with that inquiry? Well, that remains to be seen. I don't think the mandate has even been written of the commission, uh, exactly what they're supposed to be doing. What I can tell you is that we, uh, Israel, 
Uh, we investigate ourselves, we monitor ourselves. Uh, right now, the Human Rights Council is, is abusing human rights. They don't have a particularly good record, uh, which is a great shame because this is a, 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 an important issue uh, and, and one which, which needs to be respected and, and treated properly. Uh, I, I can't say that there's going to be a, a, a great relationship or cooperation with this commission. It's not been put together very professionally. The people who are supposed to be, uh, at least those who've accepted, uh, uh, members of the committee are, are, are have a, a very poor record uh, and, and, and probably should recuse themselves and allow neutral people to... to so, so it remains to be seen how, uh, whether they want to go forward in a, a professional manner or, or the current way. Right. It's not this, the UN that's calling for that. There's uh, you know, Human Rights Watch, which is a very respected human rights monitoring group. It's written to U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to express its concerns and these are its concerns, and I'm quoting, serious violations of the laws of war by Israeli forces and by Hamas and by other Palestinian groups. Well, these questions are legitimate. These questions are questions which, which we in Israel are asking more than anybody else. Israel, both the Israeli government and, and the official Israel, and, and very, very many Israeli NGOs are actively involved in asking these questions, in researching and monitoring, uh, and in getting to, to the bottom of, of these questions. We, we're a functional liberal democracy. We welcome these questions, and we welcome uh, uh, professional, uh, reasonable investigation into them. We, we are the first people to ask those questions. I want you to take a listen to what President Obama said about the recent conflict. Let's watch. You have to uh, find a way to live side by side in peace with Palestinians. You have to recognize their interests. You have to recognize uh, that uh, they have legitimate claims. And this is their land and neighborhood as well. Solutions are obtainable. The challenge now is political. It's a question of will. The United States was very critical of Israel and its conduct of the war, in fact, saying that what Israel had done was disgraceful, unacceptable, indefensible. Uh, does Israel now to have to embark on some kind of uh, action to repair the relationship with Washington? Well, allow me to say, first of all, that uh, both I and uh, the Israeli government agree 100 percent with uh, the part that you just played of the, the President of the United States. Israel has, uh, unlike the Palestinians, has long since uh, in, uh, adopted into official government policy among other things, the establishment of a Palestinian Arab state. Uh, we, we recognize that, that the Palestinian Arabs have a right to national self-determination. What we ask for is mutual recognition, that they recognize that we too, the Jewish people, have a right to national self-determination. Look, Israel and the United States have a, a well-known, very good, strong, open, honest relationship. We, we have a dialogue on, on all the, the levels. Uh, um, it's not a secret the United States is our best friend, and I, I think our Prime Minister said it best himself. He said that uh, in the last month the United States has been terrific in its backing of, of, of Israel. Israel regards Hamas as a terrorist organization. Uh, at the outset of this conversation you referred to it as a yes. terror group on several occasions. Let me draw an analogy here that may be relevant to Israel. During the apartheid years in South Africa, the white minority government there referred to the ANC, the African National Congress, as a terrorist organization that was dedicated to its overthrow. It said there were a bunch of murderers. They locked up Nelson Mandela, they called him, you know, uh, a criminal. Uh, but someone came to their senses at the end of the 80s, and they talked to the ANC, and now you have a country which is not perfect, but it is relatively at peace. Is there a lesson in that experience for Israel? First of all, it's not Israel, or at least not only Israel, who recognizes Hamas as a, a terror organization. So does the United States, so does the European Union, Canada, Japan, Australia, Egypt, and many other countries. So the international community uh, recognizes Hamas as a terror organization. Secondly, no, I, I don't see any analogy whatsoever in what you've just given, but uh, uh, having said that, I'll, I'll, I'll refer you to what the international community has said. The international community for years now has said that Hamas needs to adopt three uh, uh, principles. It needs to recognize Israel, it needs to renounce violence, and it needs to accept prior agreements that Israel and the Palestinians have signed on and are legally binding on both Israel and the Palestinians. And should that happen, says the international community, then things can change. Uh, 
The representative that we talked to from Hamas said that the unity government is still in place. That means you have a government which is made up of the Palestinian Authority as well as Hamas. Is that acceptable to Israel? No, we've said from the beginning that we think that it was a, a terrible strategic error of uh, uh, President Abbas to get into bed with Hamas. If Hamas were to uh, change its, its spots, as it were, and accept the international community's demands, that would be a different thing. But, you know, it doesn't look like that's happening right now. What it looks like right now is that they are uh, pursuing their ideology, their radical ideology, which essentially has elevated suicide to a place in society which amounts to nothing less than the worship of death. These guys are cut of the same cloth as uh, ISIS in Syria and Iraq, uh, Boko Haram down in Nigeria, or uh, the Shabab in Somalia wreaking havoc in, in Kenya. Uh, they, they're no different. Uh, if they choose to change, that, you know, that would surprise me, but that, that we would be willing to, to look at. Okay, Paul Hudson, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us, sir.